the immortal words of the queen of pop herself, music makes the people come together. Music is such a universal language that brings us all together regardless of race, gender, or creed. In a lot of ways, it has even shaped the world as we know it. Let's press play on these 10 most important moments in music history. What's up, Fagnatics? This is Discovery Amuse, serving up your daily dose of the most outrageous, outlandish, and out-of-this-world fun facts. Stick around until number one if you want to know how the Beatlemania actually started in America. The Beatles. The what? John, Paul, George, and Ringo, the Beatles. Which Beatles is this? The insect Beatles or the car Beatles? Number 10, Woodstock. Before Coachella, Lollapalooza, and South by Southwest, there was the iconic Woodstock Music Festival of 1969 that became the ultimate symbol of the counterculture movement of the 60s. This three-day epic event, attended by half a million people, that made an indelible mark on pop culture history was such a smashing success. But the OG Music Festival wasn't as glamorous and smooth sailing as its modern-day counterparts. For one, the staff was severely underprepared for the massive turnout. Just how bad was it? Well, there was only one porta potty for every 800 people. By the second day, the only food stall was running out of hot dogs, so they quadrupled the price. And because of the unexpected influx of crowds and shortage of ticket stubs, the supposed paid event became free of charge. The roads leading to the venue also became a virtual parking lot for three days, that some drivers abandoned their cars and traveled on foot instead. And a lot of unsuspecting festival goers drank psychedelic laced Kool-Aid handed out for free by some of the attendees. So basically, it was an organizer's nightmare. Because when things are organized, my internal rage just seems so much better. But despite all the setbacks, not to mention the sporadic rain, muddy grounds, and delayed performances, it was a momentous event that helped spread the message of unity, diversity, and peace. Keep watching because our number one entry will surely have you twisting and shouting. Number 9. Elvis's Pelvic Thrusts Watching this clip today, it's hard to see anything particularly scandalous with the King's gyrating on national TV. But believe it or not, back in the day, this move was deemed too inappropriate for public viewers. Much like how eyebrows raised when Miley Cyrus twerked in front of Robin Thicke at the 2013 MTV VMAs. In June 1956, when 21-year-old Elvis appeared on The Milton Berle Show, in the middle of performing his hit song, Hound Dog, the tempo switched to a slower tune. The budding music legend started thrusting his pelvis while performing, which eventually earned him the nicknames Elvis Pelvis and the King of Hip Swings. However, critics were not amused at the pelvis swinging, calling it vulgar and animalistic. So, when Elvis appeared on Steve Allen's show a month later, he spoofed his image and performed his song in front of a basset hound. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. And that's why fans just can't help falling in love with the king. Falling in love with you. Number 8. The Birth of the Billboard Charts Did you know that Lil Nas X's Old Town Road holds the most number of weeks in the top spot of the Hot 100 charts? Ariana Grande has the most number one debuts and that Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen only ever peaked at number two? For more than half a century, the Billboard charts remained to be America's premier hit barometer for music success. But before it started covering the music scene, Billboard magazine initially focused on the advertising industry when it hit the newsstands in November 1894. It wasn't until July 1940 when they published their first music popularity chart, and in 1958, the Hot 100 was officially launched. Fun fact, Ricky Nelson's Poor Little Fool made history as the first ever number one song in the Billboard Hot 100. But I would fall for a little food. Throughout its history, to keep up with the ever-changing times, Billboard has added new data streams and even changed ground rules. For instance, in 2005, they started including digital sales, and in 2012, Billboard added digital streaming to their musical Bible. Number 7. Bob Dylan Changes His Tune Deemed to be one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time, Bob Dylan has been a significant pop culture figure for over five decades. When they talk about Bob Dylan as, as a legend and a, a folk hero, 
Do you really think that anybody, let alone yourself, deserves that sort of description? I don't know anyone who calls himself that, you know. Known for his hit folk songs like Don't Think Twice, It's Alright, and Mr. Tambourine Man that have become anthems for anti-war and civil rights movements in the 1960s, Dylan stirred the musical pot when he eventually ditched the acoustic guitar he has become known for and dabbled with the edgier electric guitar. His performance at the Newport Folk Festival in 1965 became one of the most pivotal movements in rock music history, when Dylan was reportedly heckled for shedding his folk artist persona, but despite his controversial move, he released three of the most influential rock albums of the decade between 1965 and 1966. One of Dylan's most endearing hits was Like a Rolling Stone, a six-minute tune released in 1965 that didn't just separate itself from the usual three-minute length of popular songs, it also arguably signaled the birth of modern rock. Number six, Sugar Hill Gang enters top 40. Yeah, they, they put the three of us in the studio, and they, they, press, they press record, and we just kept going. And we were so naive, we just kept on rapping. That's why the song is so long. And that's the brief history of how Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight, which made music history as the first ever rap single to ever break into the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100, came to be. The hip-hop trio composed of Wonder Mike, Big Bank Hank, and Master G was assembled by record exec Sylvia Robinson, and their group was named after the Sugar Hill neighborhood in Harlem. Rapper's Delight, which was recorded in just one take for 15 minutes straight, was Sugar Hill Gang's first and only hit in the USA. And if the bass line sounds awfully familiar, that's because they blatantly imitated the melody of the song Good Times by Sheik. Nevertheless, the milestone achieved by Sugar Hill Gang's track was enough to help push hip hop and rap music into the mainstream. Number five, MJ does the moonwalk. Even though it's been years since Michael Jackson passed away, the King of Pop's legacy still lives on through his songs and his equally iconic dance moves. Take, for instance, his signature moonwalk. But did you know that this move wasn't originally his? A lot of performers had already done the moonwalk pre-MJ, but one of the most memorable versions was when Shalimar's Jeffrey Daniel did it on the UK show Top of the Pops in 1982. The impact that it had on the public was that they didn't know if something was pulling me backwards, if I had oil on the floor, if I had wheels on my shoes. Jackson, being a fan of Jeffrey Daniels, sought him out to teach him the dance move, and the King of Pop debuted his version of the moonwalk on live TV during a performance of Billie Jean in May of 1983. And the rest, as they say, is music history. Number four, Napster disrupts the music industry. Ask any Gen Z what P2P is and they'll probably scratch their heads at you. But back in the late 90s to early 2000s, P2P or peer-to-peer -peer file sharing was all the rage because it essentially made music available to people for free. Prior to that, music lovers had to get their CDs from a record store and they had to buy the whole album even though they only liked one track. I'm looking at you, Chumbawamba. I get no Teenagers Sean Fanning and Sean Parker changed all that in the fall of 1999 when they founded the P2P platform called Napster. I recall my impression having two different elements. One being, this is incredible, it's revolutionary, and things will never be the same again in the music industry. And the other being, this is going to destroy the recording industry. The internet service made it easy for users to share and download MP3 files, which is essentially piracy. So as expected, a legal battle ensued when the Recording Industry Association of America filed a lawsuit in December 1999, which eventually led to Napster having to shut down its entire network in June of 2001. However, instead of P2P dying down, other downloading services popped up, which led to plummeting CD sales. So Steve Jobs came up with with the idea of embracing the digital platform instead of going against it and building an online music store to rival the prevalent piracy. Thus, iTunes was born. Number three, MTV airs its first music video. Before MTV launched, having a music channel on TV was a laughable concept. TV broadcast stations doubted whether anyone would actually want to watch music. 
But this didn't stop MTV from introducing a 24-hour music channel on August 1st, 1981. Ladies and gentlemen, rock and roll. It was undeniably the dawn of a new era. On their first ever broadcast, the signature MTV logo was immediately followed by the music video for The Buggles, Video Killed, The Radio Star, an anthem that couldn't have been more appropriate for MTV's maiden on-air voyage. Music videos were introduced by young personalities known as video jockeys or VJs, and eventually the network produced more and more shows that helped music lovers connect with their favorite songs and artists on a whole new level. Number 2. Freddie Mercury Steals the Show On July 13, 1985, history was made when music's biggest names joined forces for a benefit concert called Live Aid, which aimed to help raise funds for Ethiopian famine relief. An estimated 1.9 billion viewers tuned in worldwide across 150 countries to see the likes of David Bowie, Elton John, Madonna, U2, and Duran Duran perform on the world's biggest stage. It's not an easy feat to outshine all that star power, but that's exactly what Freddie Mercury did when Queen finally took the stage. Mercury's top-notch vocals, outrageous energy, and phenomenal stage presence electrified the crowds during the entire 21 minutes of their set. And you hear the audience going completely nuts. And you see on the monitor Freddie doing this impromptu duet with a BBC cameraman. And his legendary improvised a cappella debut with the audience at the end of Radio Gaga became known as the note heard round the world. Before we get to our number one pick, do us a solid and make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to choose all so you don't miss out on any of our latest life-changing, boredom-busting content. And of course, be sure to turn on the notifications in your app settings. Number one. America meets the Beatles. Ladies and gentlemen, once again. On February 9th, 1964, an estimated 73 million Americans tuned in on the Ed Sullivan Show for one thing and one thing alone, the U.S. television debut of the Beatles. About two years after the band started in 1962, they already gained a following in the U.K. and have been topping the British music charts. However, they didn't expect that they would cause mania on American soil when they flew to the country in 1964. But when the band kicked into the first song, All My Lovin' in front of 700 screaming teenagers, it was official. Beatlemania had commenced in America. So, which of these moments do you think was the most iconic? Tell us about it in the comments section below. Hey, take home any of our exclusive gear by browsing our merch shelf or clicking the link in the video description. And while you're at it, Take our quiz to find out how you can earn extra cash online doing what you do best. Pretty awesome, right? Oh, and speaking of groundbreaking, you should definitely check out our list of the 10 craziest world records ever. Till then, keep rocking, Fact Natics, and see you in the next video.